Okay, everybody. So today we have Mr. Brad Meyer here. Uh, I've known Brad for a while now. Yeah, probably about a decade. Almost. Yeah, probably almost 10 years. And uh, he was a student at, at UK. And um, then again, a student then at again UK. At UK. <laughs> and uh, he, where was your undergrad? You were uh, undergrad at UK, okay. master's at University of South Carolina, and then mm -hmm. doctorate at University of Kentucky. And um, he's been in the area for a while. He works with uh, Dunbar. You worked down at, at Adair too, I think, right? Uh, just no, just no, I just hung out there okay. a little. Okay. Yeah. Um, but now he's doing some adjunct teaching um, here in the area, well, in Tennessee, and um, also at Center College here in town. So uh, he's going to have a little Morocco info for us today. I saw him do this clinic at uh, Day of Percussion a couple years ago. It was I kind of came in at the end of it in the back of the room was, was eavesdropping and it looked really great. So I'm looking forward to having you here and uh, sharing your knowledge and participating. So let's welcome Brad Meyer. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, you know, thank you for having me out and uh, I'll just do the quick plug. Thanks to Vic for the Evans Drumheads and Tycoon Percussion. If you took something from the bag, that's Tycoon Percussion stuff. At the end, I'll give you a, a second just to check it out. They sent out some neat stuff for us all to sample and uh, work with. So I just kind of wanted to start off real quickly with a demonstration of what you can do with rockers. I think someone stole my rockers that were sitting right here. Can I get those back? And then can you just use a couple of these shapes? Yeah, yeah that's my glucose mean conversion, so you can really get a nice, nice uh, set of supplements right there. So, um, just a little demo so you can kind of see what we're going to hopefully check out. And if you could, like I said, just make sure there's a little gap right there for me. Thank you very much. All right, so. <laughs> shaker. You know, it's got the same up and down. You can fill a thing of rice, make your own shaker. And really, this is one of those, like, I call it gigging instruments, something that we can make money with, which is, who here likes money? <laughs> Hands can't go up fast enough. You know? it's like, uh, things that we can make money with are great because we have to supplement our income because obviously as musicians, uh, money doesn't always come uh, you know, just handed to us. So sometimes we have to go and work for it. Uh, so hopefully with some of these things that we're going to learn about with the maracas, you'll be able to directly apply to doing it for shakers. 
So let's uh, just talk about maracas for a second. Can anyone tell me what the biggest difference between a maraca, like playing a maraca and playing a drum or a mallet instrument is? Response time. Response time, what does that mean? hear the sound like a, a split second later than you feel at the time. So the sound's absorbed in midair for a half second? Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think you're getting on to, to what uh, I'm getting at, is that uh, with maracas, it's not a direct instrument. When you hit like a table, it's right there. With maracas, like, what's your name? Aaron. Like Aaron, he's kind of talking about how when you play a maraca, it's an up and down. So it's not just you know hitting it down and making a sound. It's actually an up and a down motion. So I call this the primary stroke, where the beads or the rice in the in the gourd fall to the bottom. And then I call it the residual stroke when we go up. So you notice that when I was playing, I was actually utilizing both the primary and the residual stroke. I'm getting two strokes for the price of one. Right? It's every marching snare drum guy's dream to get twice as many strokes when you're playing, right? I can play twice as fast. <laughs> Well, you can with maracas, technically. So I want us all to just kind of experience what I call the primary stroke and the residual stroke. So just go, what's going on with me? So everyone feels how whatever material is inside your shaker is hitting the top and it's hitting the bottom. All right, go a little faster. We're all percussive, we just play faster. Good. All right, great. So you guys are already, you're already shaker experts. Congratulations. All right, so there's two different ways to hold maracas. This doesn't really apply to shakers because with shakers you basically have to either hold them or, you know, basically just hold them like this. You don't have a whole lot of options. But the neat thing with the maracas is they have a handle. So we're going to learn two different ways to hold the maraca. The first way is what I call the vertical position. And you're simply going to take your hand, make like a, a very relaxed C with your right hand, and then I want you to place the maraca kind of where your front thumb pad and your second first finger joint pad or whatever you want to call it is. That way it's just being held here. There's a nice big gap in between uh, the inside of my hand and where the maraca is. All right, that's going to be kind of our grip point. Or fulcrum, if you will, if you use that as your terminology for teaching a matched grip. Right? Next, we're going to simply put our bottom fingers, our bottom three fingers, uh, lightly around the stick of the maraca, with our pinky being at the very tip where it's touching, so that our hand is actually having the maraca kind of going diagonally, diagonally down the finger. Does that make sense? Let me see. Let me see everyone. Kind of hold it up for me. You just have giant hands. Look at look at that. You just make the shape <laughs> like tiny. Let's see. That's good. Make sure that we're not holding it up here and that we're right underneath the bulb of the head. We want to make sure that no matter what, that thing's not going to fall through our hands. That's good. Uh, choke down a little on the shaker. There you go. That way, the bottom of it. See, it looks weird for me because this is such a small handle. But if you can imagine, this is actually the bottom where the round part starts. Then I think you'll get a little bit better idea. Looking good. Looking good. Good. Looking great. Looking awesome. <laughs> Love the two shakers. All right. Good. The whole point with any grip is to match what a relaxed hand position looks like, correct? You guys know that. So like when you're walking down the hall, you don't have your hands like this. And it's like same thing with holding any kind of instrument. You want to try to replicate a relaxed hand and simply fit the stick or object in it. All right. So that's what you're going to want to do if you're ever really working on maraca technique. I don't want you to get maraca tendonitis. That would be a, a very embarrassing Facebook status. I got tendonitis from playing maracas too much. <laughs> All right, so that's our vertical grip. And we're going to keep it really close to our belly. Right, and when we play, we're going to use our arm to go up and down so that the maraca stays straight. You'll notice that I'm not using my elbow and going like this. See that kind of circular motion? We want it to go straight up and down. I like to think of two poles going from the floor to the ceiling, and that we're kind of shaking them on that direct path. So just try that for a second. Just going straight up and down. You'll kind of feel like you're just letting it fall to the floor so that they don't turn at all. Good. All right, next we have what we call the horizontal playing position. You simply just take your elbow, 
and you put the maracas directly in line with your eyes. All right, and we're going to do the same thing where we're going to imagine two poles running directly from wall to wall now, so that the maraca is going to move straight instead of in an arc path. Because if you if you listen to some uh, shaker that is shaken in an arc path, you get a lot of extra wash. But if you go straight, it's a very articulate sound. And that's what we're going for. We want articulate rhythms when, we're, when we have these kind of loosey-goosey instruments that have a lot of pieces of grain in them. Right, so get them up right by your eyeballs, and you're going to shake back to your ear, which is going to be a little loud. And then you're going to simply throw it like a dart. I, I find that people play darts a lot in college. So this might be a good analogy for everyone. It's also called the ball toss. We're just kind of tossing the ball forward. So let's try it. the one that comes back, right? Because yeah. as percussionists, we've developed all these great muscles to play down. You know, so when we go out, we're using all these muscles we've been training since like sixth grade. But when we go back, we're like, oh, I'm very weak that way. All right, so what we have to do is we have to swing the beads in the maraca gourd backwards every time. So swing it forward, swing it backwards, swing it forward, swing it backwards. Try it, just real slow. You get a very purposeful back stroke, if you will. Make sure you're keeping it in line, that you're not going down with the maraca, but you're going straight forward from your eyeball. Good. All right. So, why do you think we have these two playing positions, the vertical and the horizontal? Can anyone venture a guess for me? Yeah. The different timbres, depending on how the band goes. A different air time, like the band goes, something like that. Different air times? Like, this is different. Texture. Yeah. It can be. Uh, there's two different types of maracas that are made. One's called a stick maraca, and th this isn't like you know science. It's just like this is what they call them. A stick maraca is a maraca that has the stick going up through the gourd. This is typically when like uh, Venezuela Oropo maracas are made. They will have a little piece of the stick sticking out, and then they just attach the gourd of whatever plant gourd they're using on top, and then they'll you know attach it with a little set pin. They also do glue maracas, which is a lot like what we have, where the bottom is attached to a bulb with using glue. It's a pretty technical term that I'm throwing out at you. See if you can keep up. Right? So you've got stick maracas and glue maracas. And that can really affect it when we're doing this versus this, because we have, in a stick one, a very, um, I should say, short sound on the top and bottom. And then side to side, it's a very open sound, because you're using the part of the gourd that's not touching the stick. Kind of, the stick is kind of what the note is on a xylophone ball, right? So uh, what I'm thinking, though, is I want you just to listen to what happens when I go from vertical to horizontal. So what happens? It's more open to the top. Yeah, it's 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 it, it resonates more. It's a, it's a little bit wetter. Uh, someone said it over here, which what is what I'm looking for. They're all good answers. So it changes the rhythm. Changes the rhythm, absolutely. Why does it change the rhythm, do you think? Gravity. Gravity, yeah. all right. Or as I like to call it, gravity. It's grabbing, it's grabbing at the beads inside of the maraca, all right? So when I'm doing, when I'm shaking vertically, my downstroke is being helped out by gravity so that it's pulling whatever's inside down, making it so the upstroke isn't as even as the top stroke. But when I go vertically, I'm getting rid of gravity because I'm going on a horizontal plane or a horizontal axis. So what I like to think of is for doing uh, duple rhythms, like if I want to go one E and a two E and a three E and a, same thing that we do when we're playing rock and roll shaker, we want those to be even notes. So we're shaking horizontally, right? Vertically, we get a triplicized rhythm, a more swung feel because that gravity is helping out one side versus the other. 
So let's practice a couple of these rhythms. Uh, the first basic rhythm that we have, I call it the shuffle. All right, and it's the one that we were doing earlier. We can all do it. It's just a. Give that a shot. Just up down, up down, up down. You know why I call this a shuffle? Okay. So it sounds like a shuffle. Uh, 
plays has ever played a diddle on a marching snare drum? Everyone, <laughs> right? You don't even have to raise your hand. It's kind of a given. What happens in marching band when you're playing a diddle roll? What do people often tell you you have to do to make it sound good? I know, I know this isn't directly Moroccan related, but you know the answer. Venture shot. When you're playing a double stroke roll, what's the most common critique you'll hear? Yeah, make the second note sound like the first note, right? By stroking it out. Right? So if you ever played a very stroked out double stroke, you'll know that it's basically two really quick flicks of the wrist. Right? We can do that same thing and get kind of a four stroke rush. We go really trying to bring out, if we were thinking of a diddle, the second note. So give that a shot. We want to leave the first three notes, the up, down, up, to that primary down just at the end. Good left hand. See if you can lead to that last note.
you can get a really nice smooth roll. And if you do it with two, it makes it even more smooth. I, I imagine it depends on the shape of the maracas. Like if you absolutely like these pearls, they're very very elongated. And yeah, I mean, it, and also the more like that's a very manufactured fiberglass, whereas these are skin, so they've got uh, flaws in them. You know, they, they're a little bumpier. They're not quite perfectly round. Whereas those are very perfectly round and have a very nice smooth surface on the inside. Um, so it's. You know, whatever you're going for, just make sure that it's intentional. So if you're going for a very smooth roll that kind of sounds like a snare drum, you might want to go for something like a fiberglass. If you're going for something a little bit more authentic, <laughs> uh, skin, natural sounding, you might want to go for some like those pearls or uh, even those kind of plastic ones have a little bit more uh, darker sound than a fiberglass one. Uh, all right, and that's, those are the two different kinds of swirls. And then finally, this is one that I teach to a lot of people. But unfortunately, I think I'm like one of the few people that can do it. And I'm not bragging. I'm just saying it's a very weird thing that happens. So let's see if we can find someone else in this, this room of talented musicians that can do this. All right, so what you're going to do is drop the maraca back into the little pit that's in your, um, that's in your hand. And you're going to let the head of the maraca, or the bulb of the maraca, just hang free a little. And you're going to kind of draw a figure eight pattern with the back of your hand, letting the wrist relax and just kind of follow your forearm. It's gonna look like the tail of a snake almost. Yeah, and you're just gonna keep it back here, kind of like a microphone. You don't want it to go in front of the hand. You just wanna keep it where the mark is back towards your face. All right, and then if you speed that up, you get a really kind of cool, I like to think of it as a double stroke roll for the maracas but you're actually getting three strokes out, but it's got that same kind of rhythmic emphasis that a marching double stroke roll has. If you slowly speed this up, so give that a shot. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> now you see why, hey, that's actually really close. Cool. I know, but you can kind of think of just going side to side like a even strip and then relaxing your hand. <laughs> Does anyone think they got it? You want anyone want to oh, try their, their roll? That's really close to that. Yeah, I think you're, you're probably the closest out of everyone. That's really good too. So, that's something that you can kind of work with. And just like a, a lot of strokes, the more relaxed you can stay, the better it is. So I'm not trying to like purposely go like this. I'm just wiggling my arm. <laughs> the tension, tension bad. <laughs> Great, so. Those are a couple of kinds of advanced sounds. Uh, everyone's got a handout that they can see in front of them. So uh, we've got two different kinds of rhythms we, we kind of touched on earlier. We've got duple rhythms, ones that will utilize the horizontal. And then we've got triplicized rhythms, ones that will use the vertical stroke. All right, so on your rhythm packet, you can see we've got, uh, I, I forget how many, about 18 different patterns. And uh, I just want to go through a couple with you guys, and then I want to demonstrate the rest. That way you can get the feel for what, what we're trying to do and then you know obviously go to the practice room and practice maracas for many hours upon hours. So the first one is simply the shuffle or sorry the, the horopo rhythm that is very idiomatic to all these kind of uh, horopo Venezuelan trios made of like a maraca player, a harpist and some other instrument. Sometimes it's like a guitar or something. And Can you what talk about horopo the, the style of playing just touch on it briefly? Um, yeah, just, I, I guess, briefly, and, and, the, and the sad thing is, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of put this up front, is I don't consider myself a Horopo style master. I, I did this kind of the uh, independent student way. I didn't have a grant to go and study maracas. So what do you do when you can't go abroad to study something that you have to go abroad for? YouTube. You, you use YouTube, absolutely. I must have looked at like hundreds upon hundreds of videos of uh, Horopo style, Cuban styles, a uh, guy in his basement style. I, I checked out everything because my intention was to play the piece that I referred to, Temescal, uh, which is a piece for maracas and tape. And it's a very 
uh, kind of transparent notation. It looks like a picture. And then it's got like these little cues that are like, play a rhythm like two dots and then two dots below it. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, so I basically took that as, well, I'll try to imitate what I, I think that rhythm entails, but I also want to have a lot of variations to kind of connect these rhythms and make it a little bit more interesting. Um, as far as Heropo style, it's basically a 6-8 style, and that's why you saw me doing this one, two, one, two, one, two, triple lift, triple lift, triple lift, triple lift. And uh, everything's just kind of based around this, this kind of what I call the standard ride cymbal rhythm. If you think of jazz, what's the standard jazz pattern think of? Spang, spangalang, spangalang. So this is kind of like the Heropo Maraca spangalang. Yes, bang, 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 bang. This is just what they do to keep time. So it's just like when a drummer's going, chit, 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 That's just the basic rhythm. And then everything else is kind of like a fill or a solo, depending on how much you uh, exaggerate the fill to a solo length. So that's that's pretty much as far as I've gotten. Uh, if you want to check out some Heropo style trio music, go to my YouTube page. It's connected from my website, which is on the paper, I think. Yeah, it's at the bottom. And you can see, you can find me on YouTube. I've got all these linked, uh, and it's like 50 or 60 great examples of how to uh, put maracas into a kind of traditional ensemble or a non-traditional ensemble. Uh, so that first rhythm is simply the Heropo style 6-8 pattern. And we're going to start this out real slow. So have your maracas in the vertical position. Everyone goes, <laughs> set. <laughs> so we're going to, uh, who's right-handed? Who's left-handed? Wow, poor you. Get to teach all these left-handed guys. That's, that's a shame. I don't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so if I say right for the left-handed guys, you can you can do left, or if you want to do it, learn it righty, by all means, follow the hand patterns. That's what you do. So let's start it. We're going to do a right hand down, a left hand up, and then we're going to do a switch. So right down, left up, switch. Right down, left up, switch. Right left, switch, right, left, switch, right, left, that's the whole, right, left, switch, right, left, switch, right, left, and do a real big motion, come up to kind of your eyeball level, back down to your waist level, right, left, switch, right, left, switch, right, left, switch, right, left, Giving us 
four strokes, but one is overlapped with another, giving us three total beats. So that third partial of the triplet is actually a double note. Just a, just a, just a, just a, just a, just a, just a. You can think of it in two ways. You can either think of the double note, the one that has two beats, as being the downbeat. Or for me, since I'm a drummer, I'm used to thinking of the down being the beat. So I actually think of down, down, down. But I know in, in some Baroque style, they actually think of the double as the downbeat because that's the strongest beat. You know, you're having two for the price of one today. So let's give that a shot again before con. So low, slow, down, 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 down.
by moving our hands side to side, we can kind of utilize that and create a little bit more interesting, interesting textures rather than just going. Because after you do that for a second, people are like, okay, got it. But if you move it around and you utilize your space, you can actually get these nice little waves of sound that change and kind of emphasize certain beats and certain certain gestures. So I won't ask everyone to do this right now. You can do that in the practice room where your self-consciousness doesn't kick in. Yeah. All right. So just remember, double stroke roll, and then start moving around. You can just go. And a lot of times if you're trying to accent a beat, you can think of it like a double stroke roll and just play uh, 16th notes and go. It kind of leads to the beat. Da, 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 da. So you can have a whole bunch of fun with that. Uh, the next one you'll see on the list, uh, these are just kind of some that I want to get through, so we'll hold off on playing this for a second. Is single shot rhythm, just that giddy up pattern. It's just real articulate. And then we go into some horizontal hip techniques. Doing this thing while we're utilizing the D stroke one. So um, the first one is just splitting them, bringing that back and forth, or alternating hands. And then we can also do uh, the D stroke and go. Uh, you can utilize the four stroke. All right, this is the neat one, and this is one I want you all to try. I call this one the train, simply because it sounds like a train. All right, so we're going to play horizontal position, and this is great. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you, and then you'll find out why it's great. So we'll all play it together. So you're going to go right forward, right. So like that, left forward, right forward, left back, right back, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Left, right, left, right. Two guys are playing moderately quickly. So instead of going, digga 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 digga, they'll go, yo 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 yo, and split the drums, right? So we're just splitting ourselves. Our right hand is playing eight notes, and our left hand is playing eight notes. We're just gonna subdivide, or how should I say, alternate where we're offsetting the left hand from the right. So we're getting a twice as fast rhythm as I'm actually working. And you can force that up. that I, I feel kind of like working on because it's always neat when you can play something really fast. It's actually not very hard to do. So I'm really just thinking step to that, to that, to that, to that. And I'm getting four beats for the price of two. <laughs> All right, so we've got a couple patterns starting, if you look at measure 11, or sorry, measure 12, where we're doing that kind of left hand ride pattern. And then you can add in any kind of swirl you want. The whole idea is to keep this guy uh, straight in time. So you can do that swirl, you can do this swirl, you can do the wrist roll if you want to try it. <laughs> you can also do like a ride pattern and throw in uh, any of those bent strokes. Like the, the D swirl, you can accentuate. Do the flam. I kind of think of this as like the, the spang spang lang, and this as like a snare drum comping. So you can just kind of mix and match whatever you need to do. Uh, yeah, and I think that's, that's about all I've got on, on these. Does anyone have any questions? Did someone say clave? <laughs> oh, did someone say clave? I'm so glad you asked. Where are the maracas that I need to do? Yes. So, I love this. Thank you. Finally, someone actually asked, did someone say clave? So, uh, we all know clave, right? You've got a great teacher, and I'm sure you, you understand clave better than 
I do and many people in the state and the country do. Uh, so we're just going to do a 3 2 son clave while playing maracas. Right? So clap a 3 2 son clave for me. Uh, so one, two, ready, go. Stop, 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 stop. Geniuses. I already got it down. Usually takes me at least five minutes to get a clave to do. All right. So we've got that pattern. What is clave usually played with? Clave, like a piece of pieces of wood, right? A very short, articulate sound. So, all right, you're all probably looking at me going, that's, that's great, Brad. You're, you're just playing the handles of the clave. All right, the neat thing is combining the sounds so that you're actually getting two people's sounds in one. So I'm going to click the claves to together, and that gives me the clave sound of the handles, but it also gives me the sound of the, the shaker. The maracas. Hmm. So what I can do is fill in all the other beats with just simple maraca shapes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> getting crazy in here. <laughs> but so that's just a simple idea of clicking together on the closet and then doing those single shot shapes to fill in the rest. And it's always neat as percussionists when we can play multiple parts. I mean, that's kind of like our thing. It's like, no, 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 don't hire him. Just pay me twice as much. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyone have any questions at all? Um, I just want to say, um, you know, if you're looking for maracas, obviously I'm a typhoon guy. Uh, if you will take kids of art for take a minute and just yeah, sure. check out the maracas, it'll be a shake a uh, You can also check out um, what is it? Uh, it's on it there. It says Drummer's, Drummer's World. They actually sell original Colobo maracas. They're a little pricey, but if you're going for that really authentic sound, you know, there's nothing like a set of handmade Colobo style maracas. But, uh, you know, if you live in the U.S. and you want a very good substitute, I find these these are the medium-sized tycoon percussion. I think these are the cow skin ones. They have, like, a cow skin and some other kind of skin that I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's a very nice articulate sound. It's small. So when you're playing fast, you can really understand the rhythm as opposed to larger maracas where when you play fast, it just gets a little washy because of the nature of the instrument. Right? So with that in mind, you can read my little conclusion thing. It says basically learn how to play maracas so you can make some money and be, uh, have some ideas to contribute to an ensemble that somebody else might not. So thanks for having me out. Right and I got oh, yeah. yeah. You ever seen this pattern here where you're keeping this kind of... Yeah, I, I see that a lot. It's a, kind of like a standard... Uh, I've seen it in uh, some Mbira playing with the Hosho, mm -hmm. the two gourds. Mm -hmm. They do that one a lot as well. Um, and it's just, I, I guess for me, uh, when I was working on rhythms, I was going for really articulate rhythms yeah, because yeah. the soundtrack that I was playing on uh, was a little bit older style and it had a lot more of these really sharp pointed sounds. But I think, you know, that's, that's just a great uh, um, rhythm to add to the library. Yeah. Yeah, can you share that one just to everyone? Yeah, well, this is what I always thought was just kind is of doing a fast, a fast arc. Yeah, this kind of like a key stroke almost. And this, this is more like straight down at a diagonal. But can you see that? So you get, if you listen, you get like a real clean, like a one and a two and a one. That's yeah. better with this. Yeah. Yeah.
And especially if we're doing soundtrack stuff or recording things, adding some little little spice to a uh, project that you have. Or if you're out gigging with a group, I mean, these these kinds of things, accessory percussion instruments, you should you should own your own and at least have some proficiency with them. You can you use them a lot. If you have them, you own them. Take them on gigs, you own them, use them. Yeah, people are always like, you know, you'll be in a recording studio and you'll lay down a great drum set track, and then uh, you know you'll you'll have your stuff out and you'll see some shakers. They're like, hey, can you add yeah. those into the track? Yeah, it's a lot of depth. Yeah, and, and sometimes they'll pay you a little more. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll throw you a couple bucks. You know, you're recording twice as many tracks. Mm -hmm. If not, you're still, you know, contributing, and it's more likely you'll, more likely you'll get called <laughs> out the next time because you have something to offer that someone else didn't. Yeah. So just, just think of what a cowbell can do. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you guys thank for having me. Thank and, uh, you. Take a moment to check out everything. Uh, please just send them back here when you're done. And, uh, Thanks a lot.